A warm welcome from CXOTV.News, a flagship brand under Techplus Media Group. I am Anand Sharma from Techplus Media, your host for today's event. I'm super excited to bring to you yet another event under the series titled Marketing Mondays. We initiated the series when the lockdown started to provide a platform to marketeers to learn from fellow marketing gurus. Today, we bring a very interesting topic, which is building brands, practical tips on do's and don'ts. We have an eminent panel today. I'll request the panelists to introduce themselves. My name is Arjun Lakshmi Narasu. I am part of uh, ServiceNow with India Marketing. I look after ServiceNow with India Marketing. And I have held roles with uh, uh, Click, with uh, companies like Salesforce, Accenture for this. Predominantly, uh, mostly in marketing communications and uh, to be very more specific, I have, uh, I have uh, run field marketing for Click. I am right now running country marketing for ServiceNow. In my five years tenure with uh, Salesforce, I was running business development and also a uh, kind of uh, new role which was called customer intelligence management. I currently uh, am part of a leadership team of a California based uh, data and analytics company. We count the likes of Tesla as our customers and I'll talk a little bit more about some of the work we're doing with reference to a brand enhancement for Tesla. Mm -hmm. um, I earlier after uh, spent time in uh, before consulting, uh, building large consulting practices globally for uh, system integrators and also for a while uh, uh, being on the demand side, uh, running an airline out of Hong Kong, uh, Cathay Pacific. Um, I've been an entrepreneur for several years, uh, dabbled in edutech, uh, consumer uh, brands, and uh, currently, of course, uh, uh, with the data analytics foray. So I have been 21st year completed into, into uh, as a working guy, uh, but last one and a half, two years in, in entrepreneurship, uh, mostly dabbled into different areas of IT, uh, right from consulting, technology, strategy, uh, application development, B2B integration. And lately, in, you know, when the timing was just getting ripe for digital field, I moved into digital marketing around seven years back and mm -hmm. uh, handling some of, some of the most, uh, uh, the largest practices in, in India for sure and across the world um, some of building some of the top practices building the most marquee brand perhaps 30 to 40 percent of the fortune 100 clients and looking into their uh, their digital strategy looking into giving digital consulting setting up their mm -hmm. digital marketing platform thank you so much uh, uh, welcome once again arjun uh, pritendra and vivek so arjun uh, starting with you you know uh, in a quick one, uh, what's a brand or what constitutes a brand? Past two, two, three days, I've been doing a literal research on Google to see what the definition is. But didn't, uh, I didn't really uh, resonate well with what I think of a brand is. But I'll still, in the interest of audience and time, I would still want to kind of throw one uh, line or light on what the definition says. So anything that's a word, a symbol, a logo registered legally as a trademark, uh, to a company that uses it like prominently on their goods and or, or the services that they have or a well-renowned brand name for a product or line of service that they're offering. Informally, it could be a person famous or notable in a particular field. So that's uh, uh, too farly uh, dependent tangible definition of a brand. I think this definition goes back to our, uh, uh, you know, our advent of uh, industrial revolution and the, uh, our, uh, the materials and the power of these materials that drove the industrial revolution. So, uh, most of the, uh, you know, uh, tangible, uh, you know, equation or uh, uh, a tangible definition of a business, which is, uh, which, which kind of describes its assets, are all concrete, like you know, hard assets, like our business. Uh, balance sheets or it could be an abstract realm of abstractions from uh, from either concepts easily con uh, con driven concepts like uh, uh, price to earning ratio or the quarterly earnings today mm -hmm. in the first century of brand we stand uh, a lot more different when we're marketing to a place with uh, f full of uh, product uh, phrase that are coming up so something i uh, you know which is uh, intangible something which is a weightless notion uh intellectual, intellectual properties or ideas products are are driving far more value than these tangible assets for a company 
So okay. um, I would like to kind of uh, say a brand concept would be something that elicits positive emotion without mm. the person either seeing the product or experiencing the service. For an mm. example, very uh, simple: if a if a baby or a, a kid or a dog. uh would hear something of a sound that a mother makes or the owner makes for giving it food it has a smile on its face or the dog wags its tail i could say a very very simple analogy of a brand concept uh i i would also like to tie it back with uh because of the era that we are living in and the times that we are living in to human psychology and uh, to specifically to uh, to maslow's uh, you know need human need pyramid right human need hierarchy so the, what they say first the behaviorism of psychology says the school of behaviorism says that humans are driven by four uh, or just basic rather than categorizing it as four basic physiological needs right uh, shelter warmth uh, uh, sex food and everything else is kind of a abstract or a subset of this but master yeah. abram master kind of changed yeah. it yeah. and now we look at a different hierarchy physiological needs are the base of this pyramid followed by a little more complex needs which is uh, belonging love warmth and above top of the pyramid is the most complex uh, which is self actualization or spiritual fulfillment while i don't want to fall into the you know track of spirituality and all that but brands that are developing products services and the marketing communications kind of intelligently leveraging this this top of the pyramid emotive drivers which could be earning to belong uh, you know desiring to experience some, uh, something of a joy and fulfillment and hmm. uh, uh, hoping to transcend if a brand can relate to this leverage their product services or create product services and and their marketing communication kind of tapping into this top of the pyramid are the brands that would really be meaningful and stay up stay far apart from the rest of the commodity so just to conclude i think brand is like sponges of content images fleeting feelings uh which are spread across in this crazy information era so it it's it's a psychological uh place that public has for a brand and it will always stay there forever it may stay there forever you never have control over it but rather you can kind of guide it and influence it so you can take a brand or take something common make it more valuable and meaningful uh, that's what oh. i think a concept to kind of describe it no very well put arjun and i think you know i resonate with your uh, thought process that uh, a brand uh, uh, needs to uh, you know form a connection right uh, a brand needs to tell a story right uh, and uh, i'm sure we we all grew watching the onira ad that uh, neighbors envy owners pride right so a different kind of ad but uh, it had some 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 messaging right so getting into more uh, uh, you know uh, hardcore technicalities now ritendra my next question to you what are the types of different types of brand strategies okay and if you can summarize quickly as to which one is to be used when No, I think you know brand strategy is uh, is is a very interesting uh, phrase that you brought to the context because uh, a brand and strategy, I think, uh, in their own weights, if you like, uh, you know, brand is what brand does, strategy is what strategy does, and uh, to that extent, I think uh, brand strategy is essentially what strategy they devise so that the brand is able to do what it's supposed to be doing. Uh, now, um, obviously, horses for courses, I think. Uh, you know there are different ways you could be strategizing around brand with what you could be doing with it uh fundamentally you could have strategies which you know essentially is about envisioning the brand right so it's talking about what the brand stands for uh you know how do you emote with the brand the dna and all that stuff um then the other piece to the brand strategy is about enabling the brand right so you could have a great vision around what the brand stands for uh but if you're not able to put together the preconditions of what goes into making the brand what it is i mean for you know a simple example could be a product that's got to be delivering uh, to what the brand stands for right so you've got to enable the brand by being able to manufacture the kind of products or services that hmm. uh, give you the kind of brand uh, uh, experience that you're looking for hmm. and then of course there's a whole piece around brand execution right which is about 
uh, you know, rubber meeting the road. Um, now, fundamentally, I believe that there are uh, there are three kinds of strategies. Yeah, so I possibly use uh, categories rather than specific strategies. Um, mm -hmm. uh, the first one is essentially about building a brand, right? So, I remember uh, years back when I was uh, with Cathay Pacific. Uh, one of the challenges we had was uh, building Cathay as a brand and building it seamlessly as one brand. Uh, we went around defining what that brand stands for. Uh, but when we uh, peeled the layers, we realized that the experience of Cathay as a brand was getting to be very different uh, with customers who were on our shorter haul flights, uh, you know, typically less than, a, less than an hour, uh, to uh, the way customers would experience Cathay as a brand for longer haul flights. And uh, when we went down to the nuts and bolts, we realized that one of the key touch points why that was happening is because the amount of empowerment we were able to give passengers on the long haul flights to be able to choose how they could define their own cafe experience was very different from that of short haul flights. So, for example, if you look at the in-flight entertainment programs, short haul flights by design offered you news, offered you short clips and so on and so forth. But you wouldn't have a full service movie as you would on a long haul flight. Uh, what we did was we used the power of technology to be able to uh, give that long haul flight brand experience, if you like, to also short haul flight passengers. So much so that if I flew on a short haul flight um, and I was watching a movie, obviously I can't complete a movie in 45 minutes. When I came back and flew with Cathay, irrespective of the sector or what have you, and I was sitting on that seat, and as the in-flight entertainment kicked in, the first thing that would show up is the movie that I left half finished, right? Okay. So um, building a brand, I think, is about uh, making sure that the experiences that you have around the brand, irrespective of the context, short haul, long haul, the kinds of customers, uh, business travelers, leisure travelers, etc., you know, that's fairly seamless. The second piece about uh, brand strategies, I think fundamentally is about protecting the brand, right? Now this, this is fi fundamentally about envisaging situations that the brand could run into in the future and making sure that irrespective of the situation, the brand stayed and gave you the kind of experience that you were looking for. Hmm. Um, as I said, you know, one of our experiences about uh, building data engines for Tesla. Mm -hmm. And when we built Tesla the car, I mean, Tesla is an intelligent car. Some of the things we envisage in giving that in giving Tesla, if you like, uh, you know, the protection of the brand is to be able to emote with what customers would go through. So typically, mm -hmm. if you get into an autopilot experience oh. in a Tesla car um, and you listen to customers' conversation, of course, you know, data masking and what have you, uh, you can actually pre-configure a Tesla car and, you know, for example, the ambient temperature uh, mm -hmm. that a customer would like an air conditioning around while driving a Tesla car. I think. A lot goes into uh, uh, you know deciding as to uh, what what does a brand want to emote, right? Uh, what emotion you are trying to portray, right? Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, right? Uh, uh, the logo of Tesla or or you know so and so and so for the color of the logo, uh, uh, the size and the font size and so on. Everything has a specific meaning, right? So would you want to elaborate on that as to you know what are the different things one should one should focus on so the point i'm trying to make is that great brands are not necessarily about great features and great great attributes which it is mm. it's given but it's about less about awesome attributes and more about making your customers awesome right and uh, being able to do that uh, with imagery as i said you know in, in case of tesla the listening experience um etc i think makes it very powerful uh, let me give you another example uh, which is a little less about protecting the brand as much as about defending the brand right uh, Listerine and you know Johnson and Johnson. You have this whole uh, issue about uh, you know the brand being defaced because there were particles that were found in its Listerine. Now, one of the key elements when people buy Listerine, and I'm sure all of us use Listerine, is you like looking at the liquid. You know when you pick it up, and sometimes you look at it for what it is. Sometimes you put it in front of a light, and you emote with all the color and the purity of what Listerine stands for, right? The emotive ap appeal of the of Listerine as a brand, the senses, the visual, etc., is so intrinsic to what Listerine is. Um, now, long story short, uh, the brand has got to deliver on that emotive appeal of Listerine being a, a clear liquid and a pure liquid, right? Uh, and once Absolutely. this whole once this whole impurity piece kicked in and there were lawsuits, etc., 
one of the things that we we've, we've been able to do working with Listrin again is use the power of visual analytics so that each and every bottle of Listrin that goes off the conveyor belt when Listrin is manufactured uh, actually has a visual analytics happening on it so that any particle that's detected even if it's the minutest particle really goes off the conveyor belt so that each and every bottle of Listrin stands for the visual appeal of what Listrin stands for right sure uh, absolutely so just to round it off quickly i think what i'm saying is that strategies are about building and i think we use the example of uh, of cafe in the case of tesla it's about uh, protecting and giving the customer the, the experience that uh, they they would look for and uh, the listrin is of course about defending the brand because sometimes you know shit does happen and you've got to find smarter ways of making sure that the brand is able to deliver to its promise in this case using the power of data analytics and visual analytics to be able to do that thank you so vivek uh, coming next to you key aspects one should consider while building brands you know so if you can elaborate and what are the pitfalls brands have have been for ages you know whether we realize or not and uh, you know brands is what drive uh, this world around in fact it's been driving the humanity uh, for for time immemorial uh, i saw an analogy somewhere uh, which said the religious symbol Islam, Hinduism, Christianity, Sikhism, they are nothing but the brand logo. Each of them have logo. And they drive people, they make people belong to that, a particular interest. Similarly, brands, when, when people needed to be driven, motivated in giving their life, they devised flags in the, in the battle zones. And those bat- flags carried the emotions the associations and every individual's persona mapped to that plan you know whether it literally did or not but it mapped to that plan that is the power of brand it is it is it's that powerful and we see that in when when business leaders when visionaries build build business brands right uh, it is it is an embodiment of your vision if your organizational vision how you resonate with your customers in a very seamless effortless spontaneous way where people are say that's it this is me this is hmm. how i recognize so and and brand is fluid it changes you know don't let's not be carried by the the religious symbols which haven't changed you know for their own good reason but every other brand must be open to change I'll give an example of uh, something as common place as Uber. We have many examples. I'll come to that. Uh, Uber in 9 years from 0 to 65 billion dollar market capitalization they changed their branding and I guess five times. They changed their brand assets and I I have seen your comments about that Anand. Uh, they changed their assets five times. they change their visual identity uh, five times in those five years that showed how the brand is positioning itself on a evolving fluid basis with the, their new target audiences right first two or three were a bit of a mismatch but the fourth one i'll just come talk about that one the fourth one was very uber very chic very chic very niche and it you know some said it looked intimidating uh, it it looked that chic and when they realized that they need to grow beyond this chic audience they need to go mass scale they said this may not work out we need to change to something which everyone can recognize everyone can relate to which everyone which resonates with every customer psyche every user psyche and that is when they have changed what we see today that's the fifth incarnation of uber in 9 years right and successfully i'll give an example of what brand is how this this really it, it's not about it's a brand is abstract but it must be must be translated into your product design your product features your product messaging to the your target mm-hmm. audience mm-hmm. Uh, a beautiful example is and i may be a little biased uh, on that one is in infosys when mr narayan murthy when he started uh, it, it's my my alma mater so i said i'll be biased but when he started 
the uh, the slogan was the punchline said driven by values powered by intellect so a brand is not only about customer you see beautifully he captured he the the aspirations of employees in a service driven people intensive business he captured the aspiration the branding create ca- captured the aspiration of the employees which actually propelled a better response to the customers and to to customers it meant they are dealing in a, in a industry where they remember they were the first to start global delivery model the remote service delivery trust Absolutely. was a big factor trust was a big factor why and trust intellect having good quality service was was a paramount importance and he embodied that in a beautiful punchline for his brand uh, so so that is uh, you know it it's it's always it's a brand is not just uh, you know uh, similarly if you look at uh, steve jobs at apple he embodied he himself and he the way he did uh, within apple is uh, every every nook and corner of apple's department i have uh, my colleagues and ex clients there and have some first hand experience uh, talking to them every single department of their talks about and is paranoid about customer experience this so, and this resonates this is how it relates from to, to the audience to the final Absolutely. so it it is uh, branding is not a one way channel it is not, not neither unidimensional it's not a one way traffic that you deliver a product and then let marketing communicate that's a complete undermining of a marketing function it it is uh, you have to imbibe intricately link marketing and uh, uh, external messaging both ways right from the time you are conceptualizing building your product and then taking them to market so that is that's what i i would uh, think is is key to to branding uh, you know you you have to choose your your icons your punch lines your templates your palette very 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 carefully it's coming back to you arjun what's a brand brand building process is there a process or a, is there a method to the madness or a, do you keep doing good and keep waiting for you know something would happen my brand will become a brand one day it's not just a marketing functions job it's right from the ceo to everyone so to kind of categorize it or to in the interest of audience that we spoke before to just give them an overview i would like to answer this in two modes the one first mode i would give you a very practical probably four step approach that i have kind of figured okay this is how you could build a brand first obviously in that first four step approach is to you know perceive your or see where you are going to be as a brand what do you want and that kind of ties back to the question of why why are you doing this why are you going ahead and creating this product this service and uh, that kind of if you have that answer of why you want to do this then obviously the other uh, you know subsets of that step you know identifying your target audience identifying your personas and you're building your mission statements and and then followed by the next step is you know making sure your business strategy is full proof with why your your why statement if you are going to commit something or you are going to commit a promise to to the consumers that you're going after or the market that you're going after you need to make sure your business is going to be performing accordingly and abide by those promises third step is communicating this right that's when the logo the mission statement the whole brand value has been uh, positioned and uh, integrated with everything that you do and the final one is consistency consistently doing this over and over again i think that's where i would like to want like you know move to another topic of brand building uh, or you know uh, very uh, because of the era that we are in the 21st century of brands and uh, the amount of uh, products and services that we kind of in each market in each micro vertical also there are tons and tons and how do we kind of uh, set ourselves apart from all of this so in this i think it brings a big big culture moment uh, and three reasons that bring this culture moment is one of the reasons first one is you can't spend a lot of money to earn trust so how you behave as a brand and again i'll touch upon two things here brand awareness versus brand strength awareness is great i mean you're you spend a lot of money on advertising you spend a lot of money on email social digital all of that but what's your brand strength 
and uh, i think that ties back to what very what vivek said uh, earlier about uber right so brand strength is about two two strong you know uh, measures uh, resonance and relevance so how well are my or as a consumer i today in this market i will plumb in depth about that brand about that brand and i want to make uh, you know i want to be reassured that they are good they are sensitive they're responsible they're knowing and they're hip they're up to date so this mass customization or you know uh, uh, creative destruction constantly evolving constantly releasing new and new features now if you see on the market whichever whatever company whatever industry everybody is in this mode of constantly changing and constantly resonating constantly being relevant to their consumers so this constant behavior and quality builds that trust so that's where you know brand strength becomes a lot more valuable thing than brand awareness so trust is sure. essential for building your brand point 2 in this in this madness that we are in is uh, like i mentioned before no physical asset would be equal to something of a, what a brand could deliver it's far more higher uh, uh, value of uh, what a brand could bring than any physical asset uh, that we have you can look at like how you mentioned coca cola i mean uh, you mentioned uh, colgate i uh, look at coke or look at uh, any other uh, company right today and most of the saas and pas companies cloud computing uh, companies today they don't have physical assets most of it is intangible brand and tech offerings that they have uh, which kind of drives more value third part is uh, also very i think a very big yardstick is brand karma which is very real right in today's in today's time with the amount of information access amount of media and amplification of everything that happens online if you are not trustworthy if your organization and if your process is not abided by something for a responsible citizen or if your brand doesn't behave as responsible uh, responsible as it is it's going to die so brand karma is is very very real so in to answer your question in terms of brand building yes there are steps that you could look at you know what why is it that you're here always i think a great marketing for me for my experience a tip is when you struggle to do something to bring about a change for the larger good either through your product or your service that itself is a great marketing or a branding tool for you or for your product and then how you kind of go about it identifying your target audience you know building that uh, whole branding guidelines of how your logo should look what should be your mission statement and then marketing it you know marketing would be the money that you would put after you kind of know why your existence is so i think that's like a uh, you know few tips that i have kind of uh, you know made notes of and very like i mentioned mass customization that that brands like intel did right where they launched what apple is doing right now what most of the brands are doing right now going over and over re- re- releasing newer versions of things with, with so three months uh, time of their last product release right if, if i consider uh, uh, companies like salesforce that i work for they had around 300 plus updates and renewals every year product updates that were coming up so that kind of builds that assurance in a buyer in a consumer saying this brand is good they know what the consumer wants they are relevant and they are resonating stronger and stronger about in what's hip in the market so that's uh, i think uh, uh, in a nutshell that i could give guidance for people building a brand or a process of building a brand it's not a mar- it's not a sprint it's a marathon right you know you build it uh, over a period of time and you know it's a, it's a trust factor that you build in and then uh, that's how you say it's a it's a very valuable brand or it's a very highly valued brand right yeah i think i, I, I like what you mentioned earlier like you know it's like a great mythology uh, branding and you know you're constantly trying to evoke positive illicit emotions with your with your market you're you're releasing one then the next one then the next chapter the next chapter every chapter you're trying to make them feel good about themselves then you're trying to make them transcend into uh, something better that they would so it's about keeping them the customer or consumer at the center of everything building that trust uh, building that strength it's it's all about uh, you know i think brand building and uh, you know creating that positive experiences because sure. sure. in the market sure. that we are in right now it's we are in a very uh, knowledge driven 
customer or experience driven market so people would want to kind of relate at a very higher or a deeper level i i'll take a step back and i'll say that uh, perhaps uh, not always positive reinforcement but you want to reinforce the thoughts or uh, the emotions that you want to reinforce it might be negative either or it might be a balanced one as well right what does it take to build a strong brand you know uh, uh, or if you want to share something about brand value how what is brand value how do you calculate it talking about brand value i think i'd like to make three quick points uh, of course a lot has been written about what brand value is you know there are ways of calculating it uh, you know i'm i'm aware of at least in my own consciousness about close to 165 ways of doing it uh, but um, a brand value is all about uh, uh, you know uh, you, you're talking about getting to a point where uh, consumers are able to value the brand right so a valuable brand is really about taking it to a point where consumers are able to value that brand that's a valuable brand now uh, long story short how do you go about valuing a brand right i mean as i said there are ways and ways and methods and methods but i think a simple reference point possibly is apple and you know i would even narrow that a little bit to iphone um it boils down to three key pieces it boils down to um what are you charging your customers point one uh, point two um uh, how does that a charge out or price point for the value if you like compare with others who are offering a comparable uh, uh, services or features and three the differential how is that able to translate uh, in terms of uh, income for you whether positive or negative right fantastic Apple is, I think, sorry no i was saying fantastic please go ahead yeah yeah and you're talking about practical tips i'll also uh, leave another one now, apple is one of the few brands where they have ended up charging higher than competitors and uh, been able to translate that higher price point uh, into higher income uh, and and therefore the the brand value of the company um, now interestingly apple is also a great example of a valuable brand if you get down to the brass tacks of brand valuation which has been able to shift the landscape from being compared with you know just mobile phones if you like mm. um, to health and wellness apps right to music apps um to geolocation hyperspatial uh, you know enabling apps which kind of helps you make a lot lot of sense of where you are location wise uh, figuring out you know which is the nearest salon or restaurant or what have you right and and very uh, very smartly they introduced the i think to everything you know the ipad the iphone the <laughs> i of course, of course right so so one piece i think is about about you know that method in the madness right uh, the 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 numbers behind it. the second piece is there's supposed to be a practical tips uh, webinar you know i've gone back and i was reflecting on you know what really therefore helps you create that brand value right and if you look at the elements of what it, what it is i think uh, building on what uh, arjun was saying as well and we were prior to that it is it fundamentally boils down to uh, what is it that we do and or have right you could have resources you could have networks or whatever right and what is it that you do i, I mean that's like a whole world out there that does three things right one it delivers unique customer value and unique is is the operating uh, word here right which nobody else does it the way you do it hmm. uh two it's not easily imitable right so there are significant barriers to entry in terms of how you do that uh you know just opening a new operating system around which you build your own story like apple has in, in the more ways of one is a great way to do that and three uh, stands the test of time and stand the test of time is again about uh, making sure that the brand stays relevant with its that rise and box of 8 9 10 years or what have you and continues to reinvent itself right so i think the second piece to uh, brand valuation is about uh, figuring this mix of what you have and what you do with what you have to be able to meet these three tests if you like and most enduring brands i think have done that most valuable brands have done that the third quick point i want to make which is a bit of a a point of reflection for all of us is i think today if you look at the the corporate world and i'm i'm speaking from first hand experience so i'll talk a little bit about that maybe in the technology uh, conversations as it comes up is a uh, company is actually are spending a lot more time effort and money in protecting their brand than building it up in fact there are several cases because of litigation that the 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 latent value of a brand has been unearthed i mean i know of examples a customer of mine you know brand value was at x 
and somebody sued that customer went to courts and litigation broke hell um, and then you know when you peel the onions you realize that uh, the brand value was now being independently valued by other people not at x but at 5x right and in our world today in the, in the brand value world i think uh, we have several instances where brands are struggling to move from uh, you know a brand hell to brand heaven uh, and and making that shift being able to move from brand hell to brand heaven where you know the consequential business impact of the brand losing value uh, and and you know the fact that it hit the business is so hard is again i think a, a big reality in the brand value space that was very insightful ritendra and uh, lots of food for thought for me as well thank you so much <clears throat> vivek uh, uh, coming back to you few uh, methods and means of branding if you want to suggest uh, and you know i i uh, wanted to ask you about brand assets to what arjun said and then uh, uh, ritendra was Uh, talking about brands have to be alive they need to emote it they need to be alive they need to be always in sync with the the psyche of customer right and uh, apple is a fantastic example uh, their their entire digital physical uh, you know acoustic presence has to be in sync it has to be regenerating without any creating any confusion it has to have consistency in visual uh, appearance in optics in uh, in in acoustics in uh, any sort of intangible or tangible feelings that they create and that is why it is extremely important i think uh, somebody said just now who who do you take as for instance brand ambassador right if if you are selling an educational product and you get somebody who people your target audiences cannot resonate relate with it could be a disaster right it could be a branding disaster uh, the the guy can be very successful in his own uh, arena right so uh, i think branding uh, is, uh, is is something which is the uh, is, is the m- most important uh, uh, for business sustainability business continuity it the most critical aspect of today's uh, brand presence and and uh, brand relevance uh, where where it very fluid very fast the uh, your competitors are very fast they are lurking right beneath you right beside you all the time you have to be always on the trot there is enough technology uh, we can talk day in and out about technology how to do it there is ample amount of technology to really do at times people get bogged down by these technologies at times they overdo at times they actually start stalking it's a digital equivalence of stalking your customer right and it puts your customer off right you are tracking so much data being don't become preemptive you can be proactive you cannot be preemptive a uh, uh, certain other pro, uh, you know pitfalls are like you know apple is a brilliant example of success where even successful brands with so much uh, customer centricity can go wrong in branding let's talk about and uh, you know it may be arguably uh, arguably discussed but uh, apple watch when it got launched you know some people say pricing is a great strategy for branding uh, in a premium segment but you need to back it up and that's where branding is is a pervasive exercise it needs to go into product design product experience pre post sales customer service customer engagement outcome ensuring outcome and ensuring that they uh they your customers feels those outcomes they realize those outcomes at times they may not realize that it's an outcome of your product or your service you have to your messaging that's the job of marketing to ensure to make them realize that this is the outcome of what we are doing for you Uh, you know it it happens we have we have ample example coming back to apple when they launched the apple watches you know they how how could they go wrong in in uh, in terms of branding and messaging uh messaging is key part of uh, key steps in in the branding exercise they created four or five different versions of the watches from 300 to 17000 uh, us dollars everyone who took was confused it actually and and that's why even you if you remember when iphone launched there was a single version 
in where is on when with the went with the watches it there was plen- plenty of options it it confused there is a clear uh, uh, idea on this that it confused customers into making buying decisions it it also brought down the satisfaction and the ownership ecstasy you know so to say that those who bought 300 500 is a lot of money it's not cheap but still people felt that oh i am not buying the 17000 i am i bought a cheap product and those who bought the 17000 uh, watch felt that cheated the, that you know, uh, i paid a hell lot so at times you really have to go into psyche there has to be a trade off between pricing the volumes that you are targeting it's it's a very very conscious decision that you need to really be doing you know broadly branding uh, you know through the journey would categorize into the the you know what we say building your brand platform is very very important you know in in uh, we have been engaged extensively on this aspect uh, in you know over the years build your brand platform build a system which ensures unifies aggregates and controls your visual identity and in fact many many of these organizations like ATT Toyota and all have made their visual identity system public right some of it you can see publicly of obviously their brand managers are the ones who can really use it what it does is you know i have seen customers the biggest conglomerate global who have who are brand uh, uh, you know elements in us is completely different from what they have in in the Jap- in japan and hmm. this is a branding branding disaster you know and 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 this was i'm talking about 7 8 years back uh, I, I, still there are plenty of examples because though the technology is there so i i would think you know you, we just need to uh, have the the right strategy build the brand platform then look into the uh, brand expression that that's where comes the messaging the channel mix the media mix the the two way communication uh, uh, through and through between product conceptualization design to the customer support customer engagement loyalty uh, and uh, systems and what not then comes the brand uh, uh, expansion that is where you are actually trying to delve into a few different uh, modes uh, and capitalizing uh, at scale on on the brand platform that you have built and ob- obviously the last one is when when you have you are the brand boss you know the brand authority you know for instance in in uh, Uh, when a paytm goes for an, an ipl or a bcci sponsorship they're saying they're asserting their authority you know that i'm i'm the big guy you know so sometimes it precedes your your that kind of authority state sometimes when you have already reached sometimes it is an aspirational area for instance even in the edtech domain when baju went aggressive and tried to get some of these authoritative stages like of of ipl and the biggest brand ambassadors they are asserting their authority as a brand now this has to be backed by uh, equal amount of service trust uh, uh, and and uh, consistently being built uh, you know through the trust process uh, otherwise uh, this could be a double edged sword uh, yeah and and of course the importance of data i think ritendra was talking about data and analytics uh, data has for a marketer data is god data is is the pious uh, you know uh, holy water right it is when and i i was talking about uh, this a few days back data has you know when you you should look at it from a different frame of reference data has you know a locational composition it has a electromagnetic composition it has a you know uh, 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 the verbal uh, composition it has various different compositions so where in the in the process the data is what what was the location where it came from uh what is its orientation all this should, if you have the technology to make sense of all this across the journey and across your in, internal organizational processes you will make uh, you you chances of you going wrong in in at least messaging and trying to target trying to have a build a loyalty based uh, trustful ecosystem with your customers you would not really go wrong uh, i wanted to show you one uh, uh you know a color guide on brands i thought that it would be worthwhile to show this uh, to the audience uh, can you see the color guide on on the screen 
so uh, we see all the uh, you know uh, big small brands right and you know when i was looking at it you know it it made me feel yes that's true right so <laughs> so from uh, from uh, optimism to friendly to excitement which is bold uh, creative which is wise trust which is strength or peaceful health there's lots go into uh, uh, what you want to communicate to your brand right of course apart from uh, you know uh, how you want to present it or how you want to uh, portray it what messaging you want to do i just wanted to end this on this note that you know uh, uh, when you say maggi quality is challenged right we we have all wondered what a brand is what makes a brand successful and what translates uh, you know what tarnishes a brand as well uh, why companies like nestle become so worried uh, right when uh, when maggi is is taken to inspection and then why the brand tata demands such a huge respect and further why the modi magic is attributed to brand modi right we didn't touch upon uh, uh, you know uh, personal branding uh, which uh, i plan to take it up in the next session so whether it is a product brand or a corporate brand or even a personal brand or why so much emphasis is given to the intent right is it only marketing gimmick or sheer grit and uh, uh, meticulous hard work involved in the background we, we all know the answer though so hope we have been able to touch upon few of the topics today if not all uh, of course not all thank you very much once again arjun thanks ritendra and thank you vivek for more updates from cxo tv please like and subscribe to our channel